Hi, welcome back to the Nav Station. I'm Andy Howe. Here at the Nav Station, our goal was to get you confident enough to head out in the ocean, turn off your GPS, and get to where you're going using celestial navigation. In this episode, we're going to look at the final body of our series, and that's Polaris, the North Star. Now, Polaris sits over the North Pole just a little bit off. It's not exactly over the North Pole. In fact, Polaris describes a little circle around the North Pole, the North Celestial Pole, and we'll look at how that works. Now, Polaris can be shot just as a regular star sight, and you can reduce it the same way as you would any star. But there are specific tables in the almanac that allow you to take the sight of Polaris and with corrections for that slight difference in position year throughout the year, apply corrections and come up with the latitude, which you can then compare uh, with your DR and plot it just as a line of latitude, just like we do for the noon site, the latitude at noon site. So here's the basic diagram to explain how this works. We're back to our Earth here and our celestial sphere. We've projected the celestial equator out and here's the North Star Polaris sitting right over the North Celestial Pole, which is a projection of the North Pole. In this diagram, it's directly over the pole. As I said, it circumscribes a little circle around the North Celestial Pole throughout the year. We push the equator out here to match up with the Celestial Equator, just as a straight line. And we know latitude, if we're out here on the surface of the Earth, on the crust of the Earth, latitude is defined as that angle from the center of the Earth up to our position. From the equator up to our position would be our latitude. Now, we project our position here out as a zenith position up in the celestial sphere. So here's latitude right here from the equator up to the zenith. Now over on this side we've got 90 degrees from the zenith to the horizon. So we're looking to the north and that's our horizon projected out to that side. So if we take this diagram and we say this is 90 degrees from the equator to the north pole and we just rotate it this way we end up with our zenith position and the horizon and latitude is equivalent to the HO, or the distance of the Polaris, the North Star, above the horizon. There's some corrections in there, but that's the basic geometry that we're concerned with. So how do we get at this? Well, let's do a problem. Okay, so let's do a problem. Here we've got our information. We've got our date, February 9th, our DR position here, our site information, and then our index error and our height of I, and the time of the site in Greenwich time. So the first thing we have to do with a Polaris site is to get the LHA of Aries, and that means getting the GHA of Aries, and then applying our longitude to it to get the LHA. All the additional corrections we're going to get to with Polaris are all going to be under growing from the sexton altitude down to ultimately what will be our latitude if our site is good. So the first thing we do is we go to the February 9th box and on the left hand page we go to the GHA, the Aries column for 22 hours and we find that that value is 110 12.5. And next, we don't have to do anything else at this point on that page. We just go to the increments and corrections pages in the back for 12 minutes and 18 seconds to find the GHA of Aries value for that amount of time, which is 3 degrees 5 minutes. Add those together to get our total GHA of Aries. And 
and we have 113 degrees, 17.5 minutes. Now, just like we've been doing all along, we're going to apply our longitude. We're going to take our DR longitude of 62 degrees, 6 minutes west. And since it's west longitude, we have to subtract that. And we'll plug in the degrees. We'll make the minutes the same, although we're not going to be plotting an assumed position, but we'll follow the same, same procedure. And that comes to zero, and this is one, five. So the LHA of Aries is 51 degrees. Now, the next thing we do is we go to the altitude correction tables in the front of the book after we take out, uh, apply our index correction, our dip correction. So the index correction, if the error is on, the index correction is off. Let's take that, subtract, and then our, our height of I, our dip correction for 10 foot height of I from the dip table. Uh, if we've been doing following along here, you have say dip correction is always 3.1 for 10 feet. So that makes it easy to calculate. Uh, so 29 degrees, 8.2 minutes is our apparent altitude. Now on the inside, in the altitude correction tables under the sun, under the stars and planets column, there is just one correction, and that is for refraction. So take, go down until you find two values that bracket 2908, and you pull up the altitude correction of minus 1.7. And that gives us 29 degrees, 6 point, oops, 5 minutes. See, simple math always gets you messed up. And that is our HO. All right, now we go to the Polaris tables, which are just after the daily pages. There's a whole bunch of all the list of stars and all that. And the Polaris tables are set up with LHA of Aries across the top. And then there are three corrections we're going to add. And there's a formula, thank you very much, at the bottom, so we don't have to remember how to do this. And it says latitude equals apparent altitude correction corrected for refraction, which is nothing more than saying HO minus one degree plus three corrections, H, A sub zero, A sub one, A sub two. And that's all we have to do. Now you do need to note that on certain values of, on this side, on the first box, that in many of them they are zero degrees in some minutes, and over here it's one degree in some minutes. So you want to make sure you grab that extra degree if it applies because it's not printed every line. So the way we use the table is we go in under the LHA of Aries, which is 51, and we find the range that's listed here, which is in this case 50 to 59. And we go down the column until we get to the minutes, uh, excuse me, the degrees of LHA and that's 50, we're in the 50 box, and we go to 1. And we read off to the right, and A sub, first we have to subtract our 1 degree, I almost forgot that. And under the 50 to 59 column, we find opposite 1, a correction of, for A sub 0 of 20.3. And we continue down that column to the next box, which is the latitude box. And again, we find a, a value that's closest to our DR latitude, which in this case is 30. And that correction will be 0. 0.6. That's A sub 1. 
Now, if, if the values change dramatically, you can interpolate, but typically the, this correction uh, stays the same for several degrees of latitude, so there's usually not any interpolation required. And then we continue down for the month, and we're in February, so we would pull out a value for A sub 2 of 0.7. And these are all added, and when we add those all up, We end up with a latitude of 28 degrees, 28.1 minutes north. And we can compare that to our dead reckoning latitude. So we're not that, we're pretty close. We're, uh, uh, you know, 10, 12 miles. That's not bad. Um, and you can plot that just as a straight line of latitude and label it as Polaris and you can advance it like any other uh, site. You can combine it with other stars uh, and the moon if you've got a multi-body site going on at whatever twilight you're working with. So that's Polaris. Very simple calculation. And these three uh, cal calculations just are part of that adjustment for the fact that Polaris doesn't orbit precisely around the pole it orbits a little bit off the pole. And during the course of the year, its orientation changes, so the corrections change. If you continue down to the last block on that page, you'll see it lists the azimuth. And you can see the azimuth is always a, a couple of minutes or tenths to one side or the other of zero, zero, zero. So that just shows you what, um, you know, how, how the the pulse Polaris rotates around the, the North Celestial Pole. Now, simple calculation, however, Polaris is a, often a difficult star to shoot. It's very dim compared to many of the other stars we'd use uh, on a daily basis. So in the morning, it's as the sun is coming up, it's wise to capture Polaris first, if it's visible, uh, as soon as, the, as soon as you can detect the horizon, because it's going to get dim just in a matter of a, a less a minute or so. It's going to dim out very fast. In the evening, uh, you can preset your sex into your approximate DR latitude and scan in a direction of true north, which you'd have to take your compass and, and apply any variation or deviation to find exactly where that would be off your boat. And you can, as the stars get brighter and brighter, you'll be able to pick up Polaris uh, just there floating on the horizon. I will say that if your eyes are challenged, as mine sometimes are on a passage at night, uh, Polaris can be difficult to, to shoot. It's just there's not a lot of light behind it. You need a telescope that gathers light uh, onto your mirrors, but even then sometimes I found it pretty challenging. But in the right uh, situation, it, it, it works well. So that's, uh, that's the last body we're going to talk about in this series. Next, we're going to go on and explore some more about plotting, uh, some special situations, and some other uh, topics in this, to finish out the series. But I really appreciate you coming by and coming through all these episodes to get from just the basic theory down to where we are with Polaris. So, Thanks for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, uh, we will be publishing a few more episodes, as I say, and then we'll do some other topics as well. So you can subscribe down here in the lower right, and we'll send you alerts. And uh, happy navigating. Thanks very much.